Hi, my name is David Clark, and I'm the horticulture instructor here at the Buffalo and Erie County Botanical Gardens. And today we're going to talk about innuendo, the secret sex lives of plants. I want to show you a couple of different things about plants. How are plants pollinated? Some are pollinated by the wind. Okay? Some are pollinated by butterflies. Some are pollinated by monkeys. Some are pollinated by ants. But I want to show you this one down here on a cymbidium orchid. This is a miniature cymbidium orchid. And what I want to show you here, if I can get a nice looking flower, I think we'll use this one here. It has all its parts on it. Okay? These are nectar lines. And a nectar line would be a guiding system for the insect to find the pollen. Now, one thing about plants, there's always a reward for the sex. Okay? Whether it's nectar or sugars or waxes or oils or even scents. When I speak of a reward for sex, what is pollination? It's a transfer of sexual parts from one flower to another. That gets done in an orchid, mostly by bees. And again, you can see the landing lines here. And the jaw opens on an orchid. The landing lines are these marks that actually guide the insect inside to where there may possibly be nectar or these waxes. The landing portion, the landing attractant on the flower is everything, including on this flower, the red, the two bumps, and actually there's a channel in between that makes the insect go in a certain direction inside that flower. Because what this flower wants to do, there's a little, what I call a nose. What happens is this little waxy cover pops off. Okay? And inside of this orchid, you can see these yellow, they're called pollinia. And what happens is they have a little bit of glue on the back. So when the insect crawls in to get a snack from that flower, as it backs out, this gets glued to its backside. Backs you have those little attachments. It's almost like a post-it note. And it goes right to the back of the moth or the bee. So then what happens at this point is this is the bee, okay? It would then travel to another one of the orchid flowers, could be on the same plant. It's going to do the same thing all over again. And as it goes in, the little sticky tab comes off and gets redeposited on the new inside of this new orchid, and pollination occurs just by an insect. So we're going to take a look at another way that flowers use insects for pollination. This here is a little snapdragon. Many of you grow this in your yard. It's called a snapdragon because the jaws snap open and close. And just like on that cymbidium orchid that we saw at the beginning, it has a guiding point. Okay? And down inside of the throat of the snapdragon would be the reward for the insect being nectar. And what the plant is going to get out of this is on the top petal here, you can see the pollen. So what happens is the bee comes up to the flower, it knows there's nectar inside, it wiggles itself inside, get, grabs a little snack from the flower, and on the way out, what happens is the flower gratefully deposits pollen grains on that insect's back. So what constitutes the cost of pollination and reward of the flower to the insect? The insect gets the reward for going inside and getting the nectar. The flower also gets the reward by having its pollen transferred to the next one for the next generation. We're going to take a look at another plant and see how it also is pollinated, but this one has a fascinating history of how it's changed its pollination tactics. This is called a calceolaria, or a pocket book plant, and it has pockets on the top of it. And again, like the landing patterns we saw on that cymbidium orchid in the front, this has a pouch, and it has red on the top of it. The insect sees the polka dots and is drawn into it. Now, insects don't look at flowers the same way that we do. They see things in different spectrums. This is a UV black light flashlight. Okay? And what happens when you shine this on a flower, it's going to show us the ultraviolet spectrum. We see natural colors because colors are reflected by sunlight. But what an insect sees is colors of ultraviolet. This is, again, is a black light flashlight. And you can see it starts to glow. Right? 
and as it gets closer, I think you can see right on the lip of that calcial area pouch, it turns white and it looks like fangs. Those are the guide marks on this flower and this plant that can only be seen under ultraviolet light. I want to tell you something else about this little calceolaria plant. The original uh, parents of this plant actually grow in New Zealand. And in New Zealand, they were originally pollinated by bees. The population of the bees declined over the eons, and the plant found out and decided that it was not going to be pollinated anymore by these bees. So it changed its, this is interesting, it changed its method of attraction from insects to birds by instead of offering a liquid snack of oil to the bees, it changed its reward to fruit that birds would be attracted to. Just remember that floral sex is no less important than animal sex because without that, there would be no life on Earth. Reproduction, sexual reward, it's innuendo. It's the strange and secret sex lives of plants. I'm David Clark.